Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about entropy. And I'm going to need you all to bear with me during this uh, lesson. Entropy is not my strong point, okay? But basically what I've come to realize with thermodynamics, entropy, your knowledge of what entropy is specifically doesn't matter as much as your application of entropy to like ent uh, entropy dealing systems that we're dealing with. Entropy system. Systems that we're dealing with that deal with entropy, okay? Now, um, basically, you can define entropy as the the measure of like disorderliness in a system, okay? And um, the way I like to look at it, we have like, entropy is measured in like kilojoules per Kelvin, and I sort of look at it as like the, the level of energy the, that the molecules have per degree, right? So um, there's something you need to know called the Clausius inequality, okay? And this Clausius inequality is just denoted by this. So, I'm not really good at explaining this, but just make sure you know this, okay? Rather, this is, is the Clausius inequality, and then this, when, it's, when the Q is reversible, that's when this becomes equal to zero, okay? And you might see some terminology that you're not familiar with, I'll explain that. This Q, again, is our heat transfer. T is temperature, and this, it's just the cyclic integral of sine. And that just means that um, we're evaluating the integral over a cycle, okay? Sort of straightforward, so just make sure you know these, okay? And we can define entropy as this. I'm just gonna write it in blue because my green is running out. But um, we can define entropy as, or the change in entropy rather. You gotta be careful with that terminology. So we can define entropy as this, right? And again, this is just our heat, temperature, and this is a normal integral this time. And um, basically what we get with the units, we get units that look like this. Now we have kilojoules over Kelvin, right? And it's also good to notice that we denote entropy with S, and this should actually be capital. That's, that could be mistaken for a small. So we denote entropy with S, okay? And that's denoted by kilojoules per Kelvin, like I said before, right? And you might also see like British thermal units per uh, Rankin. And I mean, it's just good to know that it's energy per, well, let me not say energy, it's heat transfer per um, temperature, okay? And you might also have like specific entropy and you might see them referring to specific entropy as entropy, but you'll know which one generally they're talking about because like, it's just context, okay? But it is specific entropy, but you might hear them calling it entropy. Sheesh, my markers. Okay, so let's say we have this, right? Kilojoules. And then what we're just gonna have here is like times kg, okay? That kilogram is still gonna be on the bottom. Or you might have BTU per ranking kilograms. Pretty straightforward, right? Now there's some special cases that I want us to take into account that we have to be, um, it, it sort of helps us save time when we're dealing with um, entropy. So let's say I have a reversible and adiabatic case, okay, that we're dealing with. We're gonna see that we're able to just infer something. So I change in entropy with the reversible and adiabatic case. If you remember me talking about a Carnot engine, I talked about a reversible adiabatic cycle, and I said that it was called isentropic, right? Basically, what, what we have, right, that Q, right, because it's adiabatic, is zero, right? And when we're taking the integral of zero, right, any number, the, the, or rather, let me just say it's zero over T, right? And we're taking that integral, it's just gonna be zero, okay? So the change in S for a reversible and adiabatic cycle is zero. Now let's say we're dealing with the reversible and isothermal process. The change in entropy, right? We know that isothermal means that our temperature stays the same, right? So that T is gonna become a constant. And we can sort of pull that T out. And it sort of ends up looking like this. Mm. 
So we end up having something like this. Although you might see this written as just Q reversible. That Q just denotes like transfer. That, that delta, I just put that there because like that sort of changes into delta. So what we're gonna have with an isothermal um, process, we're gonna have that, okay? So it's just good to know a lot of the time we might be dealing with an isothermal process. So just keep that in mind. Um, what else can I talk to you all about? So we have something called the increase in entropy principle. Now this increase in entropy principle, um, again, I'm not very good at explaining it, but just, just here are the things you need to know. So let's say we have a process, okay? And let's say we go about this process like this. Well, let's say I start here, one, and I, I do something like that, and I'm operating on a cycle. So let's say I go like that. So from one to two, back to one. And let's say I carry this out irreversibly. This can also be reversible, to be honest. But And then let's say that this one for sure is reversible, okay? And I'm trying to find like a change in entropy that we're dealing with, right? So I can I can do this. So uh, from one to two, right? This is just gonna be this. And then this is gonna end up being, so the way I like to think of it, I don't know if this is right again, but like sort of like a vector, sort of. I just, I just remember that like, you can just have this, okay? I just know this. <laughs> See how plus S1 minus S2, okay? That's, that's the way I think about it. I don't know how accurate I am, but, so this sort of takes the causes and equality into account, and then we have this, okay? So that's less than zero, right? So what we sort of have, right, when we bring this over to this side, we get S2 minus S1 is greater than or equal to this, right? So we get um, this. And this just sort of says that like, when we're dealing with the system, any process that's taking place, it's always gonna have like, the, the change of entropy is always gonna be greater than the entropy transfer, okay? So that sort of can be said, we sort of end up with something like this, okay? So the change in S is equal to this, like we got before, plus like we generate some extra entropy, okay? So that's just, keep that in mind. We generate some extra entropy and that's what we end up with, okay? And we call this S gen or S generated, right? Just for entropy generated, okay? So this is just the, the um, increase in entropy principle that you need to know. So just keep that in mind. Um, at the same time, there's, there's some terminology that we need to know, okay? When we have something that we call S gen, okay? We can have a few things that we say and and it's 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 good to know what, what we're saying, okay? So if this S gen is equal, I know that I'm talking about like a reversible process, right? Because I'm just left with this, right? That Q reversible over T is the only thing that's there. So I know I'm talking about a reversible process, okay? Now, if this S gen is greater than zero, I know I'm talking about an irreversible process, okay? Because of um I'm dealing with, with, with a reversible, just know that when S gen is greater than zero, we're dealing with an irreversible process, okay? I'm not very good at explaining entropy, okay? But just bear with me. This doesn't matter as much as your application. And application, I'll make sure y'all are spot on, okay? And if I said that this S gen is less than zero, that's an impossible statement, okay? So just know this. Um, it's also important to know that even with an isolated system, when you carry out a process, the total entropy does increase, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and that's really what you need to know about entropy. That's sort of like a quick crash course. Um, again, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try and tackle them, okay? It's also important to note that every adiabatic and reversible process is isentropic. However, not every isentropic process is adiabatic and reversible, okay? And, and hopefully we'll get into an example where I can show you that, okay? But um, I hope I was able to at least give you a bit of an understanding about entropy. Keep watching, keep tuning in, and let's keep learning thermal, okay?